Hello my friends, it is with sad news that, for those who don't know, we've lost quite a bit of legendary status in the voice acting industry, especially those whose names are very familiar to us during the early 90s. The first one is, well, the most recent. And there's a second one that I'm going to cover, which happened this week. So, number one, we've lost um, Kirby Morrow, who was Dragon Ball's Ocean Dub Goku. He was also known as playing Miroku from Inuyasha. And so what happened is um, he passed away just last week. And this is and this piece is coming from comicbook.com. And I'm going to read this post. Dragon Ball Vegeta actor remembers Goku's late actor Kerber Morrow in poignant post. Earlier this week, anime fans were stunned to learn about the death of Kirby Morrow, the voice actor who made a name for himself, with several major TV roles in anime and animation passed away on November 18th at the age of 47. The tragic announcement brought the fandom together, together as net citizens, or netizens, I should say, Remember, the Dragon Ball and Inuyasha star for a superb work. As you can imagine, Moro's colleagues did the same online, and the voice of Vegeta in Dragon Ball's Ocean Dub sharing his own touching memorial for his friend. Taken to Twitter, Brian Drummond shared a message with fans after news of Moro's death was shared. The actor who played Vegeta in the Ocean Dub said he always envied his friend's voice and in the wake of his passing Drummond is wishing his friend the greatest peace there is such an amazing voice actor gone far far too soon over 20 years working together on so many wonderful projects I always envied Kirby's cool ass fuck hero voice and it will always be the Dragon Ball Z Goku I hear. Such great memories. Tremendous travels to you, my friend. Rest in peace, Kirby. Most recently, fans could could heard Moro's work on the show Yashihime Princess Half Demon as the actor reprised his role as Moroku. The voice actor first played the role in Inuyasha, and he oversaw the role from there on out. Oh yeah, he al he also did Gundam Wing, and um, he was in X Men Evolution. I forgot about that. Aside from Dragon Ball, Maro also enjoyed work on iconic iconic anime series such as Mobile Suit Gundam Wing, Death Note, and more. He also voiced characters like Cyclops in X Men Evolution. As for his live action work, Morrow was best known by Stargate fans as playing Captain Dave Kleiman. Our thoughts are all with Morrow's loved ones during this difficult time, and rest in peace. And then we go to the second one, <clears throat> which we lost quite recently. <clears throat> <clears throat> and this comes to us from CBR.com. X-Men animated series Magneto, David Hemlin, dies at 79. The accomplished actor, who was beloved for his iconic voice performance as Magneto in the X-Men animated series, has passed away. The 90s version, by the way. The actor who's measured distinguished performance 
as Magneto on X-Men endeared him to a generation of fans passed away on November 16th at the age of 79. Now, mind you, they were real close. So he died before he died before Morrow did. But this was reported recently. So <clears throat> he was also well regarded for his performance as the resistance leader, Jonathan Doors, on the first four seasons of the syndicated science fiction television series Earth Final Conflict, which was developed by which was developed based off ideas of Star Trek's Gene Roddenberry. Born in England, Hamblin immigrated to Canada with his family to Canada when he was a teenager. He initially attended college in the pursuit of classical education. He received an MA in English and was trying for a PhD in medieval studies when he began acting. He was spotted in a student production by a representative, representative bleh, of the Royal Shakespeare Company and soon was part of an inaugural acting company of Theatre Toronto in 1967. Among the other actors in the company were legendary Canadian actors like Barbara Hamilton, Terry Tweed, and the late, great John Colicos. You remember him from Battlestar Galactica, who would later voice Apocalypse alongside Hemblem on X-Men. He appeared in a number of theater production and had his first regular TV gig in the short-lived 1975 Canadian TV series The Adventure of Timothy Pilgrim, where Hemblem played an elixir peddler from the 1870s who has misadventures with a preteen from the 1970s who traveled through time via a magical trunk. In 87, he received more prominent television roles yet as the villainous Lord Dread on the syndicated kids adventure series Captain Power and the Soldiers of the Future, one of J. Michael Straczynski's early successes in live-action television writing. And he also went on to do Jace and the Will Warriors and Babylon 5. Since Hemblem was heavily covered by prosthetics as Dread, his voice had to sell the character and he successfully bought a great deal of gravitas to the villain. Thus, likely led to his first major animated voice acting role, that of the villain Shere Khan on The Jungle Book, the Adventures of Mowgli in 1989. Hamblin lent his voice to a number of animated series over the years. However, he's forever be remembered for his brilliant performance as Magneto on X-Men. As CBR's Gene Kendall once remarked in a review, he is the ranting lunatic or a mustache twirling Hanna-Barbera villain. Hamblin brings integrity to the role and knows just how dramatic those lines should sound. It's very easy to imagine Hemblum's voice when reading the dialogue Chris Claremont gave the character. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to really play this. You just check this out on your own. Hemblum was so good in the role that Brian Singer at least considered him consider casting Hemblum in the 2000 live action version of X-Men. But Hamblin was filming Air Final Conflict at that time and it's just unclear just how seriously Singer really considered Hamblin for the role. In his obituary that ran into in the Toronto Star, Hamblin's family noted that donations in the name of David Hamblin can be made to the Actors Fund of Canada. Now, you probably want to know why I'm pointing these two out. Well, the thing is, these are two generations. Two generations of voice acting. In voice acting, you sort of have to create your own 
persona, per se. You have to, in a way, become the person you're acting. It's something I've learned over the years when doing Let's Plays on YouTube. Sometimes a good story will bring out a character. And very few times, you know, like I said, been doing Let's Plays on YouTube for a decade. So therefore, there are times I don't want to play the game, but I want to be part of the story. And there are times that I want to play a game and not be part of the story. So it's kind of 50-50. So which is it? Do I want to be part of the story? Or do I want to be the, do I want to be the gamer? Sometimes if a story is really good because sometimes what you don't know is that I read the story. And sometimes I want to be a part of the story. And for those who have seen me do Ro Super Robot Tyson a couple of times, and how I like to yell attacks out, that goes without saying, that's what I like to do. Even though there were some times that, you know, there weren't voices, you had to, excuse me, you had to often pretend there were voices. So if I was doing rocket the punch, you know, that I had to do that, you know. Or say, get a beam. You know, I had to do something like that, you know. Even in Digimon. At the point where, you know, I'm basically at the final part of the game. And you know, I go in, I go change Greymon to War Greymon. I can't help but just say, "Joe, then she spin," <clears throat> because you know, Cho, you know, um, Combatler V. That's the only reason because of Combatler V. The Brave Tornado is basically Cho, then she spin. So I'm just remembering that or Daimos with the double blizzard, you know, double blizzard, you know, that sort of thing. As you can tell, you know, anime has played a big role in my life. And the roles I do for some projects, whether they're professional or because I just like to, because I just like to do them. Most of what, excuse me, most of what I do is, if it's not on YouTube, I can be, you know, I had to be like somewhat down to earth, very grounded, and I would have to basically dig into the character. I would have to take multiple parts of a character, and for what it's worth, it's the tone that sets the character. And these two actors, Kirby Morrow and David Hemlum, these are one of the various, various voice actors of our time that basically set the tone. They set the standard for what, for what they were born to do. And I stated this before. But being a voice actor, or rather just being a personality, be it your online or television or even in film, if you don't take good care of yourself, and and I I went to one one um. Uh, I went to one convention that basically says it. 
that one convention happened last year. Basically, you have to take care of yourself. That is priority number one. As a voice actor, the one thing you have to do is that you need to take care of yourself. The voice, excuse me, the voices that one person can do, or maybe five different voices, or maybe ten, maybe a hundred, but they vary within range and tone and everything else, especially when it comes to emotion, that takes a lot of work. The sad thing about it is um, most people, they sort of fuck up their own, they're, they fuck up their own voice by doing the following, which is, you know, um, they smoke, they drink, you know, that sort of thing. I'm one of those people who don't smoke nor drink. And the only thing that has nearly taken my life was stress. Now you're probably wondering why I'm mentioning this. Well, like I said, you really have to take care of yourself. No matter what kind of job you're doing, you have to take care of yourself. I have friends who are who are in firms and and healthcare agencies, and they might be doing work for you know. Might be doing work for five different people or six different people or whatever. I'm one of those people who don't really do that because um, I'm a voice actor. I'm basically, in a sense, contract a contract worker. And being that I'm a contract worker, I usually have to wait. For weeks on end to know, to wonder if I got the part or not, or even if I do have the part, I had to wait for the other end to contact me, and that's where I'm standing as a voice actor. It's more like I've done the part. I have to wait for contact, even what I'm doing now. I'm being dragged into another project, which would require my services as a writer. But, again, it's the contact that I have to wait. I have to ma mainly wait on contact because, you know, um, life and how it is. It becomes a thing. And I mean, it just does become a thing. And for what it's worth, um, there are times that I have to wonder about if my auditions come through or not. But that goes without saying. I still have to make sure my voice is still intact. I also had to make sure that my environment is intact. I can say this because not many people know in order to live a long, fruitful life, your everything needs to be intact. I don't usually say this very often because, you know, n normally, you know, I'd be very boisterous and very animated and this and that and whatnot. But, you know, after hours, it's just me in my natural form and just saying, hey, man, it's me. And da -da 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 -da. You know, 
It's basically just that. And what I'm doing is just that. It's basically just respecting my work and those who did the work before me. And I had to share it to people who don't know that this person passed away, these people passed away. There's another voice actor that happened to pass away too. When it was on um, Anime News Network. And I, I, I don't think I have the link on hand, but if I do, I will do it in a different video. But from what I could tell, voice actors as well as celebrities in general they're worth their weight if you know they, they are worth their weight in gold and there's so many people that basically when they go into anime they put their all into it when they go into animation, they put their all into it. Whether it's whether it's a game of you know what is it, anime, video game, or an animated project, they put their all into it. I'm one of those people that do put my all into it. Whether I'm doing various YouTube projects or I'm or I'm not, and just being the player instead of the, as being part of the story, I put my all into it. And even though I don't get as many comments as I normally would, I mean, I would get one every now and then, but as far as what I'm doing as a career is concerned, the one thing that I have been taught is to make sure that the voice stays intact. And every time I read something about a voice actor passing away, I think back to all the great voice actors in their heyday, like Mel Blanc, June Foray, um, Scatman Crothers, uh, Chris Latta, and for those who are still around, like um, Peter Cullen, Franklin Welker, um, Steve Bloom. Um, Masako Nozawa, those who are actually still around and they're still kicking, and they're in like their 70s or their 80s. I sort of get worried about that because we hear something like those people who've been around and they suddenly just poof. let me tell you. We all gonna be hurting. No lies. We are all gonna be hurting when they leave. When we hear they they pass, it's just gonna be like our everything has been shook up. So, in this case. If you're a voice actor, the one thing you have to do is take care of yourself. From one voice actor to many others out there, please do take care of yourself. That means make sure you're in a sound environment to where we'll nurture you, we'll build you up, won't put you down, 
You make sure that you know you are proud of who you are. You're proud of what you do. You make sure that what you like to be in, you're a part of that, and you know you don't parade it around very often, but you know in your heart of hearts that you're doing it just because this is something you've had in you for years. You want to be part of something big. That's how, that's the way I see voice acting. It's you're just that one star out of many that wants to be that doesn't even realize we're part of something big already. But all you have to say is I'm a voice actor. It's something my coach Tracy, she told me this, you know, you are a voice actor. So I had to constantly remind myself I am a voice actor. And I had to let the world know I am a voice actor. It's not just how you say it, but you know this is what I do. When I don't feel nervous, when I don't feel when I don't feel like I'm everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Like, I'll be real and honest with you. The last couple of parts of what I'm putting up for um, this month. I've had a really rough time trying to get these parts together. So when I put them up. The backstory of all this is it was a turbulent time trying to get recording done, especially what I've been through. And being a voice actor, basically I'm just listening to the characters talk at the same time that I'm playing the game. Being a Let's Player is different from being a voice actor. Or it could be the same thing. It just, you get to take your pick if you really want to know. Because it's just about the same thing. Except that as a Let's Player, you're picking up your controller, you're moving your character around, and you're basically going with instructions. And you tell the people that are watching your videos what you're doing. just like everybody else when you're a voice actor you're in a different world you're basically this one character who doesn't know which side they're on and you providing that voice causes the impact of said character make sense so most times when I want to do a cartoony voice I can do a cartoony voice if not I go into me in a different level like me standards me being sophisticated and then there's me being this this very serious type of person and talking like this and you know this I mean very very seldom do I actually do something like that but let me tell you there are some characters some characters that call for a different tone so for me I would have to do a different tone a voice but at the same time I need to remember to take care of myself I think that's the reason why I don't really push myself so hard as I used to. Because back in the day, I really used to push my voice so hard, especially in, a, in an SRW game, without the voice acting. Because I had to provide the voice. I had to say the, I had to say the line. 
Oh, especially if I'm doing something like Domo and Kashu. <laughs> if I'm doing the game version of Domo and Kashu, I would have to say the line, This hand of mine glows with an awesome power! It's loud roar tells me to defeat you! Here I go! Shining finger! You know, that sort of thing. If I had... Well, I kind of did it already, but, you know, just let me know ahead of time. I kind of did a few parts ahead of this one Let's Play. So, I kind of just set the line and just... Boom! It felt so good. <laughs> Even though I didn't... It, it, at the... At, the initial read is like, should I actually say it or should, <laughs> should I just let the say you do it? It's like, okay, you know what? Let's just do that. Let's just, <laughs> let's just do that. So I was like, I did it with Shining Finger and then I said, and, and then the Shining Finger Sword Attack, I did that too. It's like, I said, it's one of those times you can't just pass up on saying that. It's like, anything else, you were cool with. But once you get up to that one character, it's like, okay, you got to embrace that character at least one good time. And that's what voice acting is really about. You have to understand what the character is about. You have to understand the mentality of the character. You have to be one with that character. Because many times when I'm actually doing Let's Plays, and most people don't know this, but when I do Let's Plays, I'm throwing myself into the fray already. Whether it has a lot of characters or it just has you know a small batch of characters to a large cast of characters, I basically have to go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down with my voice. But I try not to go too high or try to go down too low. I basically have to go... You know. And for most people who follow me, most people who know who I am and what I'm capable of doing, there are some times in which I do certain projects in which I'm talking to the character and I'm having dialogue with this character my character and then the cast and then sometimes it is what it is but for the most part it is one of the joys of being a voice actor being with the cast. Now, I know I haven't gotten into anything big yet, but when I do, and most likely I will, <laughs> it's gonna be something interesting to say it the very least. And the one thing I'm just gonna remember is, you know, to have fun with the job. Being part of the group, being part of a community. It's the same thing with YouTube. You're part of a community. You have to have fun. Even when, even when you're doing something like this. Yeah, it's a sad thing that these two characters, these two people, these two voice actors... I say characters because they have been characters. They are people. They they done this for I don't know how long. Whether it was like twelve years to fifty years, it doesn't matter. But the point is this: they changed a nation. They changed a, a generation. And that's what I plan to do. Be part of something bigger. 
to which I'm just gonna say don't worry guys I'm one of you have the glasses on and everything <laughs> still going to <laughs> conventions and whatnot and just say oh hey guys I'm just <laughs> oh hey guys um, don't worry I'm one of y'all I'm a geek too don't worry <laughs> I just won't be like okay if something crazy happens and you know I get mobbed by a bunch of rabbit fans I'm like okay I gotta I said, okay, um, need to play side. <laughs> nah, I, I doubt that would ever happen. But who knows, you know, in the coming years to come. I don't know what will happen to the future of what's going to happen with me and my career. Because, you know... I'm not that big. And all I know is I put in hours upon hours upon hours of doing this. Whether I'm on the PS4 or I'm on, or I'm on here and I'm doing videos. Whether it's daily or weekly, I'm here. Doing what I do best. And the only thing I can say is if I have brought a smile to anybody's face, I think I succeeded in something. I think that is the that is the aim I'm going for. To bring a smile to somebody's face. Aside from a paycheck that will bring a smile to my face, the main thing is My aim in life is to bring back a smile. And if I have done that to a small number of people, then I have done my job. And I can go on. Just living out the rest of my life in peace and comfort. And go with a smile on my face just because I at least broke a couple of nuts with some hard heads because they probably need to laugh. So with that, rest in peace guys. Rest in peace. I'll see you next time with more great content. Take care.